Hi Dylan, 7,000 subscribers, congratulations. It's only a few months ago I was doing your video for 6,000 subscribers. Your, vi your channel must be on steroids. If this were a competition, we'd have to get you to pee in a cup to see what you're on. And that's a lot of subscribers in a short period of time. Anyways, there's seven questions for 7,000 subscribers, so let's jump right into them with question number one, best finds. Well, as I've mentioned in previous videos, that there used to be a flea market just a short walk from my house, and I used to go there every Sunday for 10 years. Uh, the flea market, I discovered it, it must have been about 15 years ago. Uh, it ran for about 10 years before it got shut down, so it's been gone now for close to four to five years. Anyways, I used to go there every Sunday and dig through the crates and found a lot of great records. And so one of the best finds I ever came across was this one. Kentucky Fried Chicken Christmas Songs. I mean, who doesn't like Kentucky Fried Chicken? And who doesn't like Christmas songs? So it's the perfect combination. Kentucky Fried Chicken and Christmas. And to think I found this album still sealed. And even more amazingly, four other people dig through that crate before I did. And every one of them went right by this album. So, I mean, talk about luck, eh? Well, that's definitely one of my best finds ever. Of course, if you're looking at the same question from a monetary perspective, well, there was a time very back when I first started collecting records that one of the artists I was really big on was Julie London and in fact many of the vendors at the flea market would give me their Julie London records if they had any because they were considered non-collectible so there was at that time one record by Julie London that I thought I would never own because for whatever reason that record would go for crazy money and here's a printout here from June 2010. It is the eBay auction results for this Julie London record of Latin and Satin. The final and winning bid was $538. Oh. Just a little out of sight of my price range. The same week that that auction happened on eBay, I went to the flea market on a Sunday morning and coming out of the sort of the, the big shed there where all the vendors uh, were that I normally dealt with, I noticed that some tables had been set up in the parking lot. So these were new vendors. So I walked over and decided to check out to see what they had. The first box I went to, the second record in that box, mint copy. I didn't see a vendor behind a table, so I shouted out, whose records are these? Some guy popped up from underneath the table, and he said, those are my records. And I said, how much for the Julie London? He said, $25. And that's all I had left in my wallet was a $25 bill, or 25, or 20 and a five. And I paid him, and off I went, happy as a lark. At the flea market, I did find many great buys. Uh, I have the one that you showed in your video, the zombies. I picked that up at the flea market. The first four or five years at that flea market um, was before the vinyl resurgence began and so typically what you had there was mostly like the hardcore collectors of vinyl records who really knew their music and they were usually focused on, on very specific types of music, maybe like a Canadian artist or something like that. It was only in the later years that vinyl was making the comeback and then a lot more people would show up and uh, sometimes it would be more difficult to find uh, good records. So let's go on to your second question and that is best song ever written and that goes without saying it's a Beatles song it's on this album right here. Still got all the pictures of everybody. Big posters. I mean, 
They don't like songs like that nowadays. You can't beat songs like that. Great song. Let's go to question three. How do you keep track of your record collection? I don't. I haven't got a clue half the time what I got in my collection. The bins, the bins might have like psych or soul or garage, but as to the content and organization, there isn't any. There was a time back, a few years back, where I went to five consecutive vinyl shows and in each case brought back at least one record that I already owned and wasn't aware of it. So I think there was one vinyl show where I actually came home with three records I already owned. Maybe it's time I just start keeping track of what I own or stop going to vinyl shows, one or the other. Okay, let's see here. The one record you would never sell. Yep, I definitely have one. And I bet you have this one in your collection too, Dylan. And I know for sure you would never sell it. You'd never put it in your record store. I mean, when you find records by this band, you hold on to them. It's Tijuana Brass. I mean, they are the grails of grails. You got it. When you find these, man, you got to hang around to them. Keep those Tijuana Brass albums. So, let's see. I actually, to tell you the truth, I have never uh, sold any records at all in my collection. In some cases where I have duplicates, I've offered to give a few away to people, who, friends of mine who might want them, but I've never sold a single record. And in fact, when I die, I'm thinking that I'm going to have be buried with my records. Because now you can buy these coffins that are wired up for music. You've got your tweeters, mid-range, and subwoofers in there. And you even run a line from the coffin to the headstone, which has a headphone jack. So that people visiting your grave can listen to what you're listening to six feet under. And of course, I'd be playing songs like Wish You Were Here, or maybe Highway to Hell. So, that would unnerve them a little bit, but that's what I do. And in fact, not only do I intend to be buried with all my records, I want to be buried with all my stuffies as well. So I think I'm going to have to buy a double plot, an extra wide coffin for my records and my stuffies. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Um, favorite music record <laughs> related to the documentary? Well, in that case, it would be 24 Hour Party People. That was a movie about the um, city of Manchester back in the late 70s, early 60s. They had the Hacienda and all the bands that came through there at the time. Uh, I think it was Factory Records. And you had like Joy Division, New Order, Happy Mondays. Guy named Gerald, I think, was another one. It's a very great movie to watch. I really like that movie. It's amazing how much drugs those band members took and could stand on their feet. So it's very worth watching. And there's a scene also in the movie scene that I always thought was really interesting. It wasn't a documentary. If it was from the movie, if I remember correctly, High Fidelity. And it was actually deleted from the final cut, but you can see that scene up on YouTube. And it is the scene where the individual is called to a house to look at records for sale. And when he goes there to look at the records, it is the mother of all collections. And he says to the woman, I can only afford to buy a couple of these records. And she says, give me 50 bucks and get them out of here. Of course, the, the records had been owned by her husband and her husband had run off with his 19-year-old secretary. Great scene, look for it on YouTube. So, next question. Favorite record you received as a gift? In my entire life, I've only received four records as a gift. Three of them, uh, eh, you know, people obviously didn't know what I was listening to. And that's why, and it always my opinion, don't give a record as a gift. Give a gift certificate instead and let the individual buy his own record. But I did get one good record as a gift. And it came from my mother when I was 13 years old. And she gave me this record. 
when I was 13 years old, I was a huge Santana fan. All my friends were into the Jackson 5 and the Osman brothers. And I told that story already in one of my other videos where Santana came to town and I went by myself to the concert because none of my friends would go to see Santana because they didn't know who they were. So, the very final question, what's your listening ritual? To be honest, I don't have a listening ritual. I'm not one of these people to sit in front of the stereo and just look at it and listen to music. In fact, the amplifier behind me in that system doesn't even have a headphone jack, so I can't even listen to it through headphones. For me, it's mostly music playing in the background while I'm off doing my own thing in my happy place, whatever. So, that's it for my video response to your 7K contests. Thank you for watching and have a great day.